Yo, what is up? Welcome to another Thursday night grind where every Thursday night I hop onto YouTube and I sharpen something on the bench at the American Edge, which is my sharpening business I run out of my basement here in New Hampshire. I'm really excited about today because I get to blend a lot of stuff, right? Like I talk about the guild a lot and the guild, the guild of professional sharpeners is where we are building a community of people who are building businesses around sharpening anywhere all around the globe and one dude in particular john at norfolk sharpening check him out norfolksharpening.com he's in the boston area um, he is building up his archive of material on facebook as a guerrilla marketing method and I, I was checking out his thread and i saw somebody asked him about a pizza cutter and he said not yet so I, I tagged him in the in the guild and i was like yo dog because i know what he what gear he's got i was like yo you can do a pizza cutter uh, so I just, I need to do a Thursday night grind about it, but I don't have enough pizza cutters. So I reached out to my email list and I was like, Hey, could I please sharpen your pizza cutter? Like, I just, I'm not going to charge you for it. I just want some pizza cutters so I can get some, get some across the bench. I don't see a lot of them. Uh, so, and, um, I was able to combine like the, you know, my email list and the guerrilla marketing thing. So I, I wrote a post about guerrilla, um, um, how to make an email list, like whether it's like how to get people's emails, what to do with them when you got them, what platforms are the best platforms for our situation as a small business. So I was able to couple all of this stuff together around sharpening pizza cutters. And now I'll go to the bench in a minute. I got a bunch to work on and I'm just going to go through a bunch of different techniques, kind of anything I can think of uh, in the shop, you know, with the tools that I have on how we can sharpen pizza cutters. Before we do that, let's go to the bench and let's inspect a few of these, kind of get a feel for what we could expect to have to work through when the pizza cutters come across our bench. Okay, first a special thanks to all my awesome customers for delivering this sweet spread of pizza cutters. A couple of things caught my attention right away. Like one, this is a, they're not all an asymmetrical grind like this one. It's flat here. This is a chisel grind. All right, not a big deal, but neat. Uh, otherwise, one thing I have noticed as well is that um, the, the edges are pretty much all rolled over. So, and that makes total sense to me. This one's a chisel grind as well, and it's got a real, real bad burr on over here. Oh, you feel that? That's totally rolled over. Okay, so one thing I'm thinking through here is that uh, so here's an asymmetrical. This one is not too badly rolled over. The, these these aren't treated with a lot of love, right? Oh, this one's chisel grind too. And the burr has fallen onto the inside of the bevel. Interesting. So I think what I'm getting at here is there's a, there's a few different uh, styles of blade. I thought they were all uh, asymmetrical bevels, but they are not. Um, and they take some abuse, so I probably am going to lean towards doing a steep bevel rather than a shallow one to make it as durable as possible. I think the for most people, they don't need like a razor sharp uh, pizza cutter, but they probably would like one that is at least a little sharp. I mean, that does actually shave a little nail. Um, that one won't. That one barely. Yeah, so anyway, I think um, I'm not gonna worry about refining it to a very fine, uh, but as I'm thinking through that, that makes it more durable too. So something kind of like a steep bevel angle and a relatively fine grit finish might be the way to go. If you do a lot of pizza cutters, let me know. Like, what do you lean on? What finishing grit and um, style do you do you do so first off the the first tool that i think i want to do is the one by 30 because uh, if you've downloaded my tool list uh, which i can make available if you're interested but i think a one by 30 is a great tool to start with in your shop because it can it does a good job it saves a tremendous amount of time at cutting new bevels and restoring chips and broken tips so it's one of the first tools that I recommend getting into if you are getting into knife sharpening 
So let's see if with, with that tool uh, we can get our bevel cut. The other thing that I didn't mention that I wanted to was that like with a stone like this, I don't see this as a, as a manual hand process, right? Like you need something spinning and then you use the, the or something moving, so a mechanized force, uh, and you use that movement to induce a level of spinning on the blade. So that, and that's how you get that. Uh, that cut around the whole uh, circumference. Uh, what I'm what I'm thinking through too is sometimes, uh, and really what you need is relative motion between in this uh, like with a one by thirty in your mind, the a relative motion between the belt and the blade. So if you put this up there, if you just touch this to a spinning belt, this blade will spin up to the speed of the belt. But if you just slow it down a little bit by by breaking it with your your finger here, it, it, that'll induce relative motion and that this blade will move slower than the belt and that's how you get the grinding action. So that's how I anticipate doing some of these. Let's check it out. So here's your close up on the one by 30. Couple ways I'm thinking through this. One is to touch the belt like this. That'll get the wheel spinning. I can break this, you know, the spin of the wheel just by touching the face of the pizza cutter here. The other way would be to do more of something like this. Uh, and then the, I think the belt wouldn't pull the, cause so much spinning in the blade. I'll experiment with both. I do want to use a Sharpie trick to start to, uh, just to get a feel for what the angle is. And, um, as I just paint the pizza cutter with the Sharpie. Okay, let's just take a look here. You will see here that the bevel was so I just at that angle I got just the edge right so the bevel is much more shallow than that uh, but I don't know that I want to go much more shallow than that I got I just started here with a 220 grit let me just see what that would look like if I went with a more shallow angle Okay, so that's 220 grit. That We could keep going up in grit there. That still leaves a pretty coarse edge. Um, I'm cool with that for like starting it. And if you had some other belts, you could refine that edge some more. I'm getting a pretty, na a pretty gnarly burr with that. Oh, let's try this too. Going instead of uh, this way where the blade really spins up, what do we get when we come at it like that? So far I like that method a little bit better because I have a better eye for the angle at that method. This is still a really uh, rough belt to do that. Let's, uh, I'm going to run a few others over and see how they come out with, with that. The next one I wanted to try was the work shark with blade grinding attachment. And I'm gonna do, in this case, this is a chisel grind, meaning it's flat on this face, and the burr has fallen into the inside of that bevel. So I'm gonna try a few different things on this tool uh, with the belt spinning up to see how I can get it to cut. Again, I'm, just, I'm curious about the bevel angles here, so I'm just gonna mark this. I have the coarse belt on for this
Because I can, I also wanted to try sharpening a pizza cutter on a Tormac. So let's see how this shapes up. All right, checking back in. <clears throat> After doing six of them now, trying a bunch of different systems, I think this is my preferred one for now. It is to cut the bevels on the one by 30, right? Pretty standard stuff there. Rather than going up and belt on the one by 30, take it over to the Tormac and finish the bevels on the stone on the Tormac graded to a thousand grit. And then if there's a little burr left on either side, take that off with the leather wheel on the Tormac. Here's what that looks like. Okay, there you have it. Several different ways to sharpen pizza cutters. We did them on the 1x30, we did them on the work sharp, we did them on the Tormac. The method that I come out of this preferring the most is to cut bevels on the 1x30, finish them on the Tormac stone, finish them up on the leather wheel. You could do it all on the 1x30 by moving up in grit. You could do it all on the work sharp uh, just by working through their belts. You could start, you could cut bevels on the one by 30 and then finish them with the belts on the work sharp because they get, they're a little finer, a little more control. Bottom line is a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, and then just some thoughts on the pizza cutter themselves. I'm curious if there's high quality pizza. There has to be, there has to be some manufacturer who like really takes pride in their pizza cutters. If you know who that is, could you let me know? None of, none of these are impressive. The rivets in the thing, like they all, they some bind. I'm holding this KitchenAid up because it was my favorite. Uh, and actually you can take the wheel off. And I was thinking about that too. If you could remove the wheel, you could put it in a jig on the twice as sharp uh, and sharpen them that way. And you probably get them, I mean, you could get them way too more sharp than you need there. But none of them really like took a great edge. Like none of them were like, wow, that's awesome. What a great pizza cutter. So I'm curious, um, wh who makes the good ones? Anyway, but it is, it, it's gonna be nice cutting a pie with, uh, with these. You know, some other people, I, I have a friend who uses a pizza cutter for everything, like uh, dicing herbs and stuff, cutting veggies on the cutting board. like. I, we probably underutilize this tool. So if you could also leave a comment below, like what do you do with your pizza cutter? And uh, what's the best one out there? So thanks for that. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe because every Thursday night I'm here doing something and uh, leave a comment if you don't mind. I appreciate it. I'll see you next Thursday.